welcome to Ask Ron number eight. Ask Ron number eight. It's the eighth one of these I've done. I'm going to call this one the FAQ edition. These are just questions that I get over and over and over again. The first two are actually questions that I ask other bodybuilders, especially ones I interview very, very often, because uh, I think they apply to anybody that's, that does this thing that we do. First one is, uh, what do you enjoy most about bodybuilding? It's a two-part question. And what do you enjoy the least? Okay. What do I enjoy the most about bodybuilding? And I think most of you would probably agree with me and feel the same way. It's the training. I love the training. I'm 48 years old. I started training when I was 14 years old consistently. That's 34 years I've been doing this. I wouldn't do anything for 34 years unless I absolutely loved it and had a passion for it. Uh, you know, I remember when I first started out, I would say I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, the learning process was very slow in those days. I had no mentor. I had no one that knew anything about this to really help me along. There was books and magazines, but from 14 to 18, I really didn't do any type of research at all, unfortunately. I just kind of did my own thing, did what other kids were doing. Uh, as a result, I didn't train legs at all, didn't train back at all. Uh, ironically, all I did was uh, really chest, chest and arms, uh, you know, some chin-ups here and there. That was it. Didn't do my first set of legs till I was 18 years old, honest to God. And then they just blew up. Um, so I would say the passion that I have for it is still pretty close to what it was back then, even though the goals have changed and I certainly don't make the gains anymore. To be very honest with you guys, at this stage, I barely make any gains. I'm not even sure I make any gains or haven't in a very, very long time. You know, that being said, uh, if I push the envelope with PED use a little further than I'm willing to, willing to spend the money on, risk my health on to a certain level, I'm sure I would be a little bigger. Would I be Big Rami? Would I be Kai Green, Phil Heath? No, I would never look like that regardless. Most of you guys don't have the genetics to look like that either, no matter how long and hard you train and you know, no matter how many drugs you took. But I still love training so much that I do it three days on, one day off with weights over and over again. Uh, I don't even feel like I can really get anything done in the day. I can't really focus uh, on my work until I've gotten my workout done for the day. Otherwise, I'm thinking about the workout. So I'm fortunate enough that most of the time I can train fairly early in the morning, usually around 9, 9.30 after I've had a meal, uh, and then get to the gym, and then get work all through the afternoon and often into the evening. But uh, And, you know, obviously I'm limited by injuries and stuff too, and any of you guys, if you make it that far, if you train for 25, 30 years and you get to the point where you've been doing it that long, you're going to have aches, pains, you're going to have probably a history of a couple muscle tears here and there. You know, I'm not going to go into all mine. My main problems are my lower back is never very stable. Uh, as a result, I don't squat very heavy anymore. 315 is about as heavy as I'll go on squats these days, whereas in the old days, you know, that was like a, that was a warm up. I would do 405, 495 for sets over and over again. Don't deadlift anymore. So I'm kind of limited in what I can do. I can't do all the exercises I used to do or that I would like to do, but I still enjoy the challenge of trying out new exercises, trying out new angles on exercises, trying to hit the muscles in a different way, trying to get the best pump possible, trying out different things like supersets, drop sets, just different techniques to, to get a different feel on the muscle. And that's the challenge for me, especially at the point where I'm not getting stronger. I'm, you know, I, I, it would be nice if we could all get stronger forever and ever, but then we'd have people bench pressing 5,000 pounds and squatting 10,000 pounds, which we don't. There's a limit to how strong you're going to get. Uh, eventually, you're going to reach it. And at that point, you have to look for other ways to keep muscle growth going. And when you've been training long enough, uh, getting any type of gains is, is a real challenge. But, you know, I, I embrace the challenge. If it was easy, it wouldn't be that interesting, honestly, I don't think, for me. Okay, so what do I like the least about bodybuilding? Easy, easy answer. It's the eating. Oh my God, the eating is a pain in the ass. So I'm about to bitch and whine here, bitch and moan, so get ready. Uh, I've said on Facebook a few weeks ago, and it got a lot of uh, responses, that as a bodybuilder, you're always in one of these situations regarding eating. It's either I'm eating right now, I just ate, or I need to eat soon. And it's because we need to eat so much more frequently than the average person to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish with muscle growth, repair, recovery. So we're eating every two to three hours that we're awake. Uh, it's also could be compared to driving a car or a truck for a living every waking moment of your life. But the catch is that car or truck 
has a two gallon gas tank so you're constantly running out of gas and you have to pull over and refuel that's what it's like it takes a lot of meals you know most guys who are doing it living at the bodybuilding lifestyle to the extent that it's supposed to be lived uh, you're eating you know five or six solid meals a day plus a shake or two uh, I'm on the lower end I eat five typically five solid meals a day and two shakes so you know that's not a lot compared to I've heard guys that'll do eight nine ten meals a day that's that's a lot of meals um, so also it's not even the eating you're spending a lot of time eating but you're also spending a lot of time cooking those meals you're spending a lot of time cleaning up after yourself washing pots and pans dishes things like that uh, I recall talking to Dana Lynn Bailey DLB for her column when she was trying out intermittent fasting I haven't talked to her in a while maybe she's still doing that so intermittent fasting she'd wake up I guess around 6 in the morning 7 in the morning and she wouldn't eat anything until around noon and she said you know what the greatest thing about this is I'm getting so much more done I have all that time where I don't have to worry about eating and cooking and cleaning and eating and cleaning up after the, the meals so you get more done she says I don't know how bodybuilders get anything done and you know that that's a good point you know, we spend a lot of time we invest a great deal of time and the, the catch is for most of us we're doing this recreationally it's a hobby we're not making a nickel off of it we're never going to be professionals uh, we're never going to be famous it's never going to put a dime in our pocket but we are investing a great deal of our time and money into it because eating that way it's a lot of money think about eating five solid meals a day and if you're eating things like eggs chicken breast steak turkey breast fish is very expensive so it's the proteins that are expensive definitely uh, carb sources not so much obviously rice oatmeal cream of wheat potatoes sweet potatoes they're not that expensive but meat as you guys who shop for yourselves know it's up there it's especially quality meat quality fish fresh fish it's it's a, it's a lot of money so I could certainly do without the eating aspect of it now the eating is a necessary evil I've heard a lot of arguments by people saying you don't need to eat that much you could eat twice a day huge meals or three three big meals a day you'd be fine anecdotal evidence from millions of people over the years supports otherwise that you are better off having smaller meals more frequently than you are eating like a regular person because you do have that constant supply of amino acids and glucose and everything bam 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 in your bloodstream for the muscles to work with um, you know and I also believe that uh, shakes shakes are something a lot of people do have to depend on rely on because they don't have the availability to sit down and eat every two to three hours and they absolutely cannot eat five six solid meals a day maybe they're commuting they're in classes they're working there's a lot of jobs where you just can't drop everything and eat or you might think it's about time to eat but no now you got to do something good example big oso ken banks who just did the north american very popular forum member here on md he posts on daily pump picks hell of a guy he's an er nurse so that's a life and death situation type of job he might be about to sit down and have a meal when three gunshot victims get you know get arrived by ambulance and they need all hands on deck in the er so what's he going to say i'll be there in like 15 minutes guys i'm going to sit here and chew my chicken breast and my brown rice because you know i got a contest coming up or you know i need to make gains no he's got to drop everything he keeps shakes so he can at least have a few gulps of a shake and take off and that's how a lot of a lot of people's jobs are a lot of people can't prioritize their eating to the extent that we talk about in pro bodybuilders lives and you know when I write these articles and I put the diets down and I talk about how they eat this is how they eat but for most of these guys this is their job a lot of them are under contracts and if they work they're personal trainers so or they a lot of them now are, are prep coaches so they can basically work their schedule around their meals make appointments around meal times and workouts so they get all their meals in you know they're eating six to eight meals a day most of these high-level competitors high-level national competitors and pros and you know most people can't do that they just don't have the time it's not gonna work it's not gonna work um, but you know I kind of look forward to the day when I ease back on it and I'm not worried about making gains or even trying to maintain all this muscle mass and I don't have a tremendous amount of muscle mass I'm aware of that I'm a little under 5'8 now I'm shrinking I maintain a pretty lean 225 and just to maintain that amount of muscle mass it does take for me those amount of meals when I when I skip meals when I rely more on shakes I do start losing a pound here a pound there I, I see it happening 
I lose a little bit of muscle size and fullness within a couple days of doing that. So I know for me, I do have to keep up that eating regimen. Okay, so those are the two, that two part question. Next question is, a lot of people want to know, why isn't bodybuilding more popular? Why isn't it a mainstream sport like NFL football, Major League Baseball, the NBA, even hockey? These are things that millions of people watch on TV every week. They're huge fans. These sports fill up arenas and stadiums. They have major sponsors like Pepsi, Ford, Budweiser, Gatorade. Why don't we have all that? Nike, Reebok. Why don't we have that? Why don't we have that type of fan base? Is it because bodybuilding isn't on TV? Because a lot of people say, you know, if bodybuilding was on TV, we would have that type of fan base. I would argue that we would not because uh, those of you guys who are a little older will remember that bodybuilding was on TV for a long time. NBC and ABC in particular uh, on their sports world type shows on Saturdays, they used to do uh, event coverage of the Mr. Olympia for years. And uh, in addition to the big networks, ESPN, I worked with a company called American Sports Network. We did one hour specials of the Mr. Olympia, the Ms. Olympia, the USA. Uh, there was another company out of New Jersey, High Bar Productions. I believe they produced the body shaping show, but they also did event coverage. So that was on ESPN, ESPN2, I think even another network. So it was all over TV for a while. But it never did catch on as a mainstream sport because, you know, to be a fan of bodybuilding, you really have to live the lifestyle and have a real eye for physiques to appreciate what you're looking at. If you're in a bar, if you've ever been in a group setting and bodybuilding comes on and you're with a bunch of people who aren't bodybuilders, they're either A, disgusted, like, ugh, look at those those guys are gross, so that's what the women usually say. Or, you know, people say, oh, it's all steroids, a bunch of juice heads. Or if they're not saying anything derogatory, they just don't get it. And they're like, I don't know what I'm looking at. Everybody looks the same to me. They're all, they're all flexing. They all have big muscles. They all have a bunch of veins. So I don't know. How do they pick the winner? This is ridiculous. And in a sense, what they're pointing out is that bodybuilding isn't a sport in the sense that these other sports are. It's not something that's so objective where... You can see the plays happening and the ball goes in the basket for one team X amount of times or this team gets X amount of touchdowns and that team gets the other. It's not like that. It's not that easy to follow. It's more like a beauty pageant. You know, I've watched shows like the Miss America or the Miss Universe and, you know, I don't know how they judge those. I see a bunch of gorgeous women. I see some that I find personally more attractive, but does that mean that they should win because I think, you know, I like a certain type of look, maybe a more Latin look or whatever. And, you know, this judge next to me likes more of a blonde look. I don't know. And that's kind of how bodybuilding is. We do have, you know, certain criteria, things that, that are supposed to all be weighed equally, mass, condition, shape, symmetry, proportion, presentation, all these things. But you can't sit there and educate the regular person about that. You could try, and even if they... You can't make people interested, is what I'm saying, in something that they don't find interesting because you're trying to force the issue. It's like, uh, you know, I'm one of those weird people that doesn't like traditional sports. I don't find football that interesting to watch. Baseball bores the crap out of me. Hockey, I, I, I don't, I can't sit there and watch these things. It just does not hold my interest. And that's how bodybuilding is for most people. Because, like I said, our fan base is very different than those other sports. So those other sports, people are watching the athleticism and the plays. And that's what's interesting and exciting. There's, there are things going on that they can follow. Bodybuilding, there's not a lot going on. So we have a situation where most of the bodybuilding fans are bodybuilders to one extent or another. They might not all compete, but most of them do go to the gym, you know, a few times a week, train pretty hard. They, they do eat these multiple meals like we talked about in the other questions. And they are working on their physiques. They're always trying to, you know, grow or bring up their arms or their chest or their quads. So they're a very different type of person than your average, your average American or whatever that can't really follow what they're looking at. They, you can watch, show them, put them in the front row of the Mr. Olympia, and they'd be like, well, that's that's nice, but I don't get it, and I don't really care to watch this. So uh, I would even argue that bodybuilding is more has more exposure today than ever before by, by a huge margin, thanks to the Internet and social media. I mean, think about it. Back in the old days, it was on TV a little bit, sure, and but we had magazines that came out every month, had a very limited amount of people that are going to go out and buy a bodybuilding magazine. Your average person is not going to do that. But now, everyone has a smartphone. Everyone has a computer. you got YouTube. you got Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. 
you could see you can see bodybuilders pictures and videos 24 7 you could literally spend all your waking hours looking at bodybuilding pictures and videos if you wanted for free basically and for that reason we do have a lot more people now that are into the lifestyle of going to the gym with the idea of changing their bodies than we ever had ever before I would say it's probably twice the amount that we had years ago and that's not a bad thing I mean that's just because they're not all going out to shows and supporting the magazines and a lot of them do buy supplements but the awareness for bodybuilding uh, is much greater people are people are have that access to it so easily now that they never did before because everyone's got an iPhone or a Galaxy or whatever everyone can check out but you put search words into a uh, into them and you can see all kinds of bodybuilders and follow them every day they all have their own blogs and vlogs and YouTube channels and they post on Instagram every day multiple times most of them so I would argue that bodybuilding has more exposure now and it is more popular than ever um, this was my first experiment doing Ask Ron on my own computer I'm praying this came out okay so I will talk to you guys next time